Okay, so with this last row of adorable sheep, the knitting on my Rhinebeck Doodle Cowl is finished. So today, I'm going to go ahead and block this. We are expecting 87 degree weather today, and then we're actually quickly dropping. So on Saturday, it's going to be a high of 71, which is obviously a big difference from 87 and a low of 44, so that's amazing. But anyway, I need to go ahead and put this out in the sun to dry when I block it while we still have a lot of warmth. And then I will graft it. But I sure do love this. I'm very excited since I've knit one of these before. I know how they fit and it's like a dream. It's just so fun, so I can't wait to show you guys. You're definitely going to want to make one for yourself. <laughs> I really love the colors in here. I think actually the section is my favorite. I like the high graphic um, nature of, of right here. I think this turned out really, really pretty. But when I block this, it's going to even out so much and look absolutely beautiful. This is a rarity, but my daughter is going over to my mother-in-law's house, her Mimi's house, today while I'm at work. So I've packed her lunch. She's got fresh banana pancakes for breakfast and some leftover roasted purple sweet potato and butternut squash from our dinner last night. And um, of course her little smock because she's the messiest eater. She's talking to a rock right now. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a good day. Good morning guys. It's another day at the yarn shop. Today is Wednesday, October 4th. I just got here to my shop and I went ahead and made some coffee and I've just finished tidying up the yarn wall a little bit. My daughter is actually with her, her Mimi, her grandmother today, which is a rare occasion so I can actually get some work done. I don't know really what to do so my dilemma when I have uh, my hands free like this is there's so many things I could do and so I get kind of analysis paralysis and then I end up not doing anything <laughs> it's not that I don't do anything but I worry for I, I spend so much time thinking about what would be the best use of my time that I think I end up wasting some time so my options for today are to have sort of an unexpected yarn dyeing day. Um, I have some undyed yarn that could, that I could dye up and get out on the wall. And um, I would also, I could also make some project bags. I really need to make some bags. Um, that's been lowest priority for a while now, simply because I haven't had the time. And the other thing I could do that I really want to do is start on my quilt, but I won't be doing that. So part of me is wanting to shirk all of my responsibilities and work on that, but anyway, I won't be doing that. But I was thinking that for today's video, I might, um, I might take you through my yarn stash a little bit, my personal yarn stash, at least the portion of it that's here at the shop. Um, I have some really beautiful treasures and I thought my, maybe I would just share them because I love to see the yarns that people collect or um, have plan have project plans for. So I thought I might do that. Yeah, I think that would be fun. Plus it would give me a chance to really look through everything, um, which is always such a source of inspiration when you have a chance to look at all of your colors and remember the projects that you have planned. and. Um, there's like a handful of things that don't have any projects planned that I could start to think up. Um, but yeah, so I think we'll do that. I'm at the shop now and I am soaking my cowl to block. So I just put this in with, um, very room temperature water, probably a little bit on the cold side. 
and I have some lanolin based wool wash in here. I think I used my Tuft Woolens bar today and so, oh my goodness, this is already so soft I can't stop touching it. <laughs> I'm not worried about felting it because I dye yarn all the time. I, I know how uh, hardy it can be so <laughs> if you're worried about me poking it. I just am feeling how soft it is. It's so nice. This is going to be a wardrobe staple. sure when or how this happened but apparently the majority of my hand dyed yarn stash is all this color family everything is blue and green and I'm a person who has really never knit with either of these so I guess this is reflective like these yarn purchases are reflective of my desires for upcoming projects some of these are mystery skeins and so I've just happened to accumulate a lot of these colors too but my goodness, so I figured I would go ahead and start with this color family since I have so many of them apparently. So starting over here, you can see these gorgeous yarn labels. This is from Long Dog Yarns One Collection to Rule Them All, which was her Lord of the Rings collection that she did this year. I have a very gorgeous color palette. Of projects to work up my goodness so these three are all on her DK base these are merino DK so they're a hundred percent wool merino wool this one is the light of Arendelle and it's so beautiful the silvery white color this one is the deep breath before the plunge Subtly variegated. So gorgeous. And this one is legless. Nice sagey green. These three are going to be an Odyssey shawl by Hohi Locatelli. I think it's going to be so whimsical and, um, I don't know, I'm just going to want to frolic through a forest <laughs> wearing this. That's such a beautiful pattern. Um, I have a friend in person who knit one. So I got to see it and it's just so stunning. So I'm excited to do it in this really light, um, neutral color palette. And this is also from that collection. This one is the sock base. It's bounce sock. This is just, this one's called the Lord of the Rings. And I do plan on making some socks from it. I love the way that Brandy does speckles. And then these ones are extremely exciting. These are her silk, yak silk base. This one's called A Shortcut to Mushrooms, and it's 65% merino wool, 20% silk, and 15% yak. They're a fingering weight. So this base has a gray tone to it, so this took the dye in such a gorgeous way. And this is going to be an oolong tank by Amy Schur. That is one of the cast-ons that I'm the most excited about. And then over here, this was an order I placed with Stress Knits earlier this year. I got two of her Surrey base, which she calls Cloud, and this colorway is called Mountain Mama. And I haven't actually knit with Surrey yet, so I'm excited to work on this project. I did just get in my own Surrey base to start dyeing for the shop, so I'm thinking about dyeing some up today. But I am excited to work with it. I love mohair, I think I'll always love mohair more because I like the sheen in that silk and just the way that it looks, but the Surrey is beautiful and it's completely soft in a different kind of way than the mohair. And then I'm going to pair it with this one, which is her favorite base in the eucalyptus colorway. It's a nice squishy two-ply wool and nylon blend, fingering weight. And these will become, I think, a love note by Tin Can Knits. I've knit that pattern before and I really love it. So I'm thinking about making it again. I might make a size smaller this time and um, 
yeah, that one's like a, a knit that is very quick. So I know that the second I cast this on, this will this will just fly off the needles. I just have to find the time. <laughs> okay, and then coming up here, these three I actually just showed yesterday or the day before because these just arrived. These were a pre-order from Treehouse Knits, her favorites collection that she did earlier this year. Um, and these three are on her sport base. They are called Sea of Venus. So I am going to be making a tessellated pullover with these three. And I'm going to be using my hand spun as one of my colors. And then I also have this cake. This is almost 100 grams. This is a cotton fluff kind of yarn. This was from Lavender Loon. I got this in a kit when I knit my Mosaic sweater by Olga Putano. Um, and it, the majority of this yarn was left over, and I think it's perfect for the tessellated pullover because it's on the thicker side, um, and it still has that fluff, and I think the colors look really nice with the hand spun. So this is going to be a very pretty sweater, um, very light in color, but I am so excited to make this. I honestly don't know how much I'll enjoy the knitting process from what I've seen from others, but the finished object and getting to knit with my hand spun plus the stash that I wasn't sure what to do with is going to be very rewarding. And then over here, these three are each from the Yarnaceous Fibers. Um, oh, this one's not. These two uh, on the right and the left are from the Yarnaceous Fibers Paleo Botany Club, her 2023 Paleo Botany Club. And this was a single skein that I ordered for a project. I can show that later with its mate, but this one, here's the name, Athenacrinus, Athenacrinus, something of that nature. And this is on her Salta fingering base, which I love. It's 8515 Merino Nylon. It's extremely soft and lovely. Similar to Lord of the Rings, but side by side, they're certainly quite different. So I'm not sure what that will become yet. I'm deciding if I'm going to do like a faded shawl or sweater with the Yarnaceous Fibers Paleo Botany Club. This one is sea glass. So I ordered this one to go in another Olga Putano sweater, a colorwork sw sweater called Mangolid. And I will be pairing it with one of these oranges. I can't remember which one. I'll have to look at my notes and the picture to see which one I had in mind. I think it's this one. And then I need to dye a couple of skeins of main color in a light pink because I'm actually matching Olga's colors. But this is orange kyanite. And this one is hematoid. I Yeah, I think it's that one. So that's an, another exciting project. And then here, I just got these in a couple days ago when I showed off uh, the... Sea of Venus colorway. Uh, Treehouse Knits did a mystery skein like pack sale, um, a really great sale, and I really love her yarn, so I just went ahead and got a few skeins. I got three on her sock. This is the spruce sock, so it's a 75-25. I've only ever had her two-ply for fingering, but this time I got... I love this round, um, just smooth sock base but this one is a hundred to one i think this is my favorite out of the colors it's very beautiful she pulled this off really well and this one is williams hardware which i of course love because it's um a reference to luke's diner in gilmore girls before it was luke's diner <laughs> this one's very nice and this one is kim's antiques which again i love because of Gilmore Girls. Now this one, I'm really not sure what I'll make with. Um, that has yet to be determined. It might be a pair of socks for my husband. And then finally, with everything that's on the table right now, up here, these are the rest of my mystery skeins from the sale. These came together, and the longer that I look at them, the more that I love them. <laughs> So these are each called Serendipity, but I think I think this was maybe from her Winter Tonals collection. Um, she had a green that I really wanted to buy, but I didn't, and so I'm excited to have this. It's really beautiful in person. 
And then these three, I'm so happy. When I first got my mystery packs, I was I was amazed at how beautiful they were, but I was not it wasn't the color palette I was hoping for. So I wasn't sure, you know, really how this is silly, but how content I was with it. But now that I'm seeing them out of the plastic, I'm really just in love with them. So again, they're all ca called serendipity. I'm not sure what these ones were. They look like probably the Gilmore Girls collection. Anyway, they're they're beautiful. They have a little bit of everything. They've got brown, green, blue. Very lovely. So I'm I'm really glad that this came with three of these and one of these because this will be amazing for color work. So that is my blue and green stash. I'm sure I have more of these colors. All of these yarns are what I would say are more typically me or more the colors that I naturally gravitate to. Although seeing that pile of green really reaffirmed my ever-growing love for green yarn and blue. Um, so this table is very exciting now. <laughs> so let's see, we'll start down here since I just showed these, but these are both Yarnaceous Fibers. Some of her oranges, these are her gemstones, which are her tonals, her solids. And then over here, I have two skeins of Garden of Even, uh, sorry, Garden of Eden Fibers, Cloud Surrey Silk, and the color is Winterberry. I got these from Hillary when we did a show together in Atlanta, and um, in person, I think these are slightly more mauve than they're showing up on camera. I think it's when the light hits it just right, you can see the core, that pinkish color. Um, it looks a little bit gray on camera, but still gorgeous there. And then these yarns. I'm actually ashamed <laughs> that these are still in a skein because I think they're so precious and gorgeous. I cannot wait to knit with these but at the same time they're so beautiful I almost just want to keep them like this but that is not their purpose so I will be using these um these I'm not wanting to play favorites but these might be my favorites that I have <laughs> so these are all cat sandwich fibers these three are her sweet and spookier colorway which is maybe my favorite yarn I've ever seen I don't know how she does her speckles but they are so stunning. I just, I love these. I cannot wait to cast something on with this. I haven't yet because this is, so I think everybody has that one yarn in, in their stash or maybe a sweater quantity where they just know it has to be the perfect project. And for me, this is, this is that. This one has to be the perfect project. And I'm not sure what it is yet, but I'm trying to really be thoughtful, something that I will want to wear for as long as it holds up. <laughs> but these are um, sock weight, so these are fingering weight. So I'm thinking a cardigan, but I, I'm not sure. And then here, I have two other gorgeous colors from her. This one is the Strawberry Glaze colorway on her trusty base. These are all the trusty base. And this one is Pink Pineapple. And again, with the speckles, all that's really different is the base. And I love all of these so, so much, but there's something about this very subtle peachy color that I think is just beautiful. And then, oh, and the air conditioner just went off. I'm so sorry if that's been noisy. Um, but over here, we've got more Yarnaceous Fibers. And the more, uh, these one, two, three, and four are part of the Paleo Botany Club. The year's almost done, so I'm almost done receiving yarn. I just have a couple more skeins. I really, really love this one. This will probably be a hat for me because I'll want to wear this often, I think. This is another one of my favorites. And then this one was one of her mystery skein sales that she did at the end of last year. And I love it. It's just a beautiful purple tonal first sight. It says MC, so I'm wondering if this was from a kit, like as if that was the main color, but I'm not sure. And then over here, I have some lambstrings yarn. I've used up the majority of my lambstrings yarn stash, but I do have a couple of skeins left that haven't um, wound up in anything. But she does gorgeous work too. This one is Nettle. This is her Tralala -la sock base. These are all just waiting to become the perfect project. <laughs> this one is Nocturne.
And then this one, which is much different than the colors she normally dyes, this one is sugar and spice. Okay, I'm stopping to drink some coffee because I've already talked so much. <laughs> Okay, and next to the Sugar and Spice by Lambstrings, we have another Long Dog Yarn. This was from her Labyrinth collection. This is on her Bounce Sock base, and it's As the World Falls Down. When I ordered this one, I also ordered um, Babe with the Power, which is like a purple color with gorgeous speckles, and I knit a Muscle Burra hat out of that. And then coming up this way, I have this single skein from Nerdy Knits. This one is um, Prismatic Shard. So this is a Stardew Valley inspired colorway. And if there's one thing you should know about me, it's that I love Stardew Valley. If I could live in a video game world, that would be it. This was one of her, um, what did she call it? Well, this was a discounted skein, but to me it is perfect. So I think I don't think she need, needed to discount this one, but that's just my opinion. Now I haven't seen her not discounted version, so I'm not sure how much it differs, but I love this. And what I'm planning on doing with this is there is a sweater by Woolen Pine called Prismatic. So I'm planning on using this as the color work in that sweater. And then here, and then here we have a kit that I got from Treehouse Knits. And this one was her Spring Equinox kit so each of these this is supposed to be a fade um, I don't intend on using this colorway if I if I do this as a fade I, I more than likely won't include this one it would just be those four or even just those three or some combination of those ones if I do use this in the kit um, I think fading point by Hohi Locatelli I think that one's a five skein so I could use all of these for that um, I need to double check that but this one is very beautiful. This is this one is called Spring Equinox, and this is her Sequoia sock base, which is that two ply I was talking about. I've knit a, a cardigan, Posy by Marcena Kolacek, in this yarn base. This one is Ostara. It's beautiful. This one is Fay Garden. Robin's Bounty. And this one is Full Bloom. And then here, uh, the same day that I got those Surrey yarns from Hillary of Garden of Eden, um, Ryan from Ryan Yarn was also at the show, and we did a, an exchange. So he, we traded um, a skein of yarn each. He, I can't remember the name of the colorway of mine that he got, but this one is called Ocean Soul. And so I traded him for this one. And I plan on knitting a sweater for my daughter out of this one. It's a really nice, cozy yarn base. It's also the 80-20, like these. And it's just nice and soft and squishy, and I think it will be a really nice sweater for her. Okay, and then I had one more Paleo Botany Club that didn't make it on the blue table, although these are looking definitely a lot more green and pale blue than this kind of blue. So these two are kind of outliers, but... Yeah, I think this was actually January, so this was the first one we got. Okay, so that's that table. Oh, it's so fun and luxurious to not only be able to stop and appreciate my stash, but just I just want to acknowledge the fact that I even have all of these. I am so grateful, and now we are kind of um, in tighter times, budget-wise, because we've had a lot of things happen, so... Um, buying yarn. I've done plenty of that. Now I get to knit all of these and thoroughly enjoy them. Oh, I didn't mention this one. I got this at Maryland Sheep and Wool last year. This was from Yarn Hero. I knit a sweater out of one of their yarn bases, but they also do mill ends. So these are discounted and they're not, um, I can't remember how many grams this ended up being, but basically it's just the mill ends of their yarn. So you can buy small quantities and get a discount. And this one is about a DK weight. I would say a sport to DK. So this will be a nice color work in something. Yeah. So that is that table. 
one more cascading shot. That was not my entire yarn stash, but that's all I'm going to go through today. I will show some more um, on another day. Now that was the majority of my hand dyed yarn, although I do have a few more skeins that were in the next cubby over. So I will show those on another day this month on another vlog. But I hope you enjoyed getting to appreciate those with me. It's so fun because there, I feel like there's just so many yarns we always gravitate towards and want to buy but um, don't always have the money or things sell out or you know it's not practical to have all my yarn ever. Um, so I like to watch and see what other people have because I know that I can't have it all but just getting to see it and like appreciate the beauty and find inspiration in it I think is nice so I hope you get something out of that too and maybe you will have seen a color that is something you could get or you might think of a future project or keep your eye out for something similar yeah but I hope you enjoyed that and found some inspiration in it that was my my goal in sharing that normally only let my knits soak for about 15 minutes and I just forgot completely that this was in here so it's it's now been about half an hour so I need to get this out <laughs> this part always makes me laugh <laughs> like abusing your knitwear uh, taking a minute now that my doodle cowl is done and blocking to um, pick my Agni card cardigan. I still can't, don't know if I'm getting that right. Let's see. Agni cardigan. Okay. Anyway, I've picked up my Agni cardigan again to just to um, get started since everything was sort of on held yarn and I needed a second set of needles to start the side and so now it's established and my goodness, that took me a moment. Um, I have a small error that I think I might be able to actually fix, but I will do that post um, knitting just to see if it's really noticeable because it's going to be under my hair. This is the top of the neck line, so I might be okay with that. But reestablishing this double knitting band that was on hold and, um, you know, okay, so all of these stitches I had to pick up I had to establish the brioche and I had to continue on here with the double knitting which is why I needed the second set of needles to um, have this section and this section on separate uh, needles and anyway this was a headache I had to redo this part a couple of times um, for various reasons and okay so this little line that's in here I actually think that is part of my scrap yarn that I held the stitches with um, something got lost along the way like you can see it's running through the stitches and so I'm wondering if I can just pull it out but I kind of am nervous because I'm not really sure what it's connected to um, I was impatient and I made a kind of a rookie mistake and I placed these stitches in the beginning when I held them on the same yarn that I'm knitting with so uh, I told myself then that it was a bad idea and um, I learned my lesson Anyway, I'm just glad to have this going again, and so now I will have a, an arm and a, like a shoulder, and then eventually I guess I'll be picking up and picking up these stitches and working back and forth. But um, now that the doodle cowl is done, I think I can devote my attention to this and the M cowl that starts tomorrow, not today like I was saying, but by the time this video is up, it will be today. Oh, goodness. Anyway, I'm glad that this is back on the needles, and maybe I will get this done for Rhinebeck. We will see so beautiful. I think today's vlog is going to be a long one. I'm at this point kind of have lost track of everything I've uh, stopped to record but I uh, I was just gearing up to start sewing some bags and um, the pattern templates that I've made I I couldn't find all of them so as I was looking for those um, I had a customer come in and she stayed for a while and we chatted but I had to come and kind of record this memory because these these vlogs for me so far have been nice to record because it's kind of helping me to slow down and really consider everything that I'm doing and be mindful um, about everything I get to enjoy in a day and even some of the not enjoyable things but 
um, anyway, I want to preserve this memory a little bit because so I own, I own my own yarn store. I'm sure if you're watching this, you're probably familiar with me and my shop, but I meet all kinds of people who come through these stores. I think the knitting community is so vast and so wonderful and not just the knitting, but crochet, fiber arts in general, other crafters. Um, I say knitting automatically because that's what I do. So that's what comes to mind. But regardless, this community is just amazing. I think we all know that. I have never met a stranger who's come through the doors of my shop, uh, whether it's a first time customer who found me on Google or from word of mouth, um, or if it's a, a regular or just whoever comes through. I just experience so much kindness and joy. And anyway, I just had a customer, she was a first time customer. The words of encouragement and love that she left with me are going to stay with me for a long time. To have somebody take the time to so freely and beautifully express their thoughts about my shop to me was just such a wonderful experience. She just was so um, passionate about my store. To have a person walk around and point out things about maybe the feeling that your store gives off or the space that you've created and to so similar to what you had in mind when you did the thing, whatever it is, I'll give an example in a moment, but to, to really call that out and to have the same feeling about it that you do or did, or, um, it just means so much to know that what you're trying to get across is being absorbed by the community and enjoyed and appreciated and, you know, the way that you would hope. So she took a while to kind of talk about her perspective on the yarns that I carry. Now, of course, I'm a, a dyer, so I have my yarns behind me, but I do carry lots of yarn brands. Um, but they are all, they're not things that I, you know, brought in uh, by accident. Everything is very intentional. Um, and I have a whole plethora of reasons why I bring in each of the yarns that I bring in. But um, she was just so sweet about what I have chosen to carry and the way that I display my items, um, how, you know, the store defied expectations of what you might have because um, my store is kind of, it's in the small town. We're not too far away from like Birmingham and Montgomery, but the town that we're actually in is fairly small. And so I could get why people might have the perception before they visited um, and who maybe don't see what I have online about what I might carry. But to have her come in and just say, wow, this is amazing. And then to for her to tell me how much it defied expectation and, um, but to point at, this was what got me. She was pointing out the things like the bunting that I've sewn and have hung up. And, um, you know, they're, the, it's leftover fabrics from projects I've done. She's pointing out that. She's pointing out the murals on the wall and, um, just all of the little things and telling me, this was what got me, telling me that my artistic eye and my passions for things other than knitting just spill out into the store and how it was encouraging and, or how she got that impression. And I'm probably, I'm, I'm kind of like overwhelmed because it was a really sweet encounter, but so I'm probably not expressing it very well. But anyway, I just, especially this past week that I've been making these daily videos, I have been so blown away by the number of people who have taken the time to send me something kind or leave a kind comment or come in the store and just show so much love. It is amazing because it's easy to get the perception that we live in a very gloomy world. And I know that we all have our struggles and things that we deal with. Um, for me right now, this time of year is very difficult because I lost my best friend, um, to a very unexpected and tragic death, uh, October two years ago. So in general, this time of year, um, like part of the reason why I'm doing these vlogs is actually 
because I'm trying to find joy again in this time. And also, I've spent so much time um, reflecting on my friendships in general and with him and my relationships as a whole. Um, and so to have people who don't probably don't even know that they're leaving some like a comment, for example, that is impacting me so greatly because that kind of uh, kindness and um, I don't know, it's just, it's beautiful that, so if, if and, and this is specifically to you if you're watching and you've done this, um, just thank you. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, but when I started this little YouTube channel, again, and it's very little, but when I started this little YouTube channel, I thought I might make a few knitting friends or I thought I might connect with, you know, a couple of people. But the number of people over the past couple of years who I've just felt so much to sense of community from is just amazing. So anyway, I just wanted to say thank you. <laughs> that was kind of a ramble. I might have cut out some of the chatter and, and squirreliness. But um, yeah, I just wanted to be sure to say thank you. I, I haven't taken the, a second to really acknowledge that yet. Um, so thank you, guys. This has been a really fun week and very encouraging. Um, I appreciate that you guys have wanted to join me in my um, my day to day. It, it's really special. So anyway, okay, enough of my rambling. This really is going to be a long video. I have my um, cowl right here in front of me, my Rhinebeck cowl. And um, most of these ends I wove in as I went. I just knit over them, especially, and I wasn't, uh, I mean, that was, that was really, that's usually what I do, but especially since this is just a tube and all of these will be trapped inside of the knitting, um, I knew that would be a perfectly fine way to weave in the ends. So the majority of these are woven in and just need to be snipped. So I'm about to go through right now and weave in anything that didn't get knit into the fabric and then snip everything. And then I can go ahead and graft my two ends together and um, have a cowl. Oh, it looks cute. It looks so cute. Okay, so I'm gonna work on this. All right, I have both ends of the cowl on size five needles, 24 inch. And now I get the fun part of crafting. So um, with these cowls, of course, you can decide whether or not you want to graft it as just like donut <laughs> if you want to just do like a circle or if you want to do it with a twist um okay so I just went and grabbed the other one that I did the ocean doodle cowl this one I grafted with a twist in it it's probably easier to see it when it's on me but you can see that the the fabric you know crosses over and I think I really like the way that that looks um and Let's see, you can kind of work it around so that the twist, so you can kind of work it around so that the twist is, you know, in a particular spot. So maybe if you have a chart that you liked a little bit less than others, you can kind of have that one folded over or, or whatever. But um, I think I'm going to do a twist in this one too. I really like the way that that looks. This is my ocean doodle cowl, just uh, thrown on, but... It's so cute and um, I can't wait to have my Rhinebeck one. I think the colors are going to look so pretty. Look, it's done. It's four o'clock so I really need to go because I have to pick up my daughter. But I literally just finished Kitchener, the Kitchener stitch. So this is grafted and it's all done. And oh, it's so cute. So I did end up going with the twist. Um, so I grafted it so that it's twisted. This one I think is slightly shorter. No, I know that this one is slightly shorter than my Ocean Doodle cowl because that one, I I put an extra two inches on it. And so this one is the large. This is like right on 30 inches. So if you do the twist and you have 30 inches, this is pretty much how it looks. I'll uh, give you a full view. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I love every part of this. Look at my sweaters. 
this is the only chart where I wish that I would have done something different. And I knew that before I knit it, but I was like, you know, I'm just going to get it done. This is a skein of yarn, but I had a feeling that if I did the light color as the background and the dark color as the color work, it would probably stand out better. And I, I think that's true. I mean, you still get it, but um, yeah, if I was to do that again, I would just take the time to alternate to do it differently. I just didn't know which colors to put because I had already used white here and brown here. And anyway, not that it matters, but look at all my cute little sheep. They're so precious. I actually finished this with a sheep chart. So I did, I did the big sheep for the last one. And so it's next to my starting chart, which was the bunny. I knew I wanted to make the bunny first. And then there's pumpkins. There's the coffee cups, a couple of the, um, so there's a leaf. I really love every section that has these two colors together. Now I'm getting myself all twisted up. But there we go. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's exactly, it's exactly what I wanted. So that's my win for today. And now that's one less project on the needles. And it's a test knit, so there's pressure off. And it's one less project on the needles for casting on the Stephen West M cow tomorrow. So yay. Okay, now I've got to run and I think it's going to take a long time to edit my videos tonight. So I don't know how much extra footage I'll have after this, but yeah, what a good day.